Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about the Sigma 16mm f1.4 and the Sony a7 III. I'm super excited about both of these. Let's get into it first with the Sigma, because the Sigma, they're basically... Okay, I'm going to take a step back for a second. There are three lenses that I want, at least for myself, not when I'm necessarily doing professional work on any system, right? And that's a wide, a normal, and a short telephoto, like a portrait length lens. Sigma's coming out with the 16 f1.4. I love f1.4. It's so hard to go back to an f1.8 once you've started using f1.4. I know it's crazy, but for me at least it's true. I'm such a boca whore. But the 16 f1.4 fills the wide niche for me, and that's awesome. I have been so convinced for so long that Sony would not support APS-C E-mount enough and that I'd have to move to something like Fuji. And Fuji is really attractive to me because of the AF joystick. Very simply, apart from everything else that they offer, like the beautiful colors, they support their lenses much better. And with Sigma coming out with the 16 f1.4 and probably a 50 or a 55, something just a little bit shorter than the 60 according to their lens roadmap, that's super exciting because that means that now I can have all of the lenses that I want for the camera that I already have, and I can, it's huge. These are the th this wide, normal, short telephoto. In 2018, all three will be available. That is, if I can, I don't know if I'll be able to, but if I can, as soon as that 16 comes out, I'm gonna snatch it up because that is awesome. Anyway, sorry for that, I'm just so stoked. I have a little think going on because in my opinion, at any rate, Sigma is keeping these three primes, the 16, 30, and 50, 55, in the contemporary line, not because they're lesser optical quality, oftentimes, actually, they're better optical quality than their already released E-mount art series lenses that are at, like, f2.8. They're better optically, they're not doing them as art lenses because they're saving those that art badge for like the 18 to 35, the 50 to 100. Now on DSLRs, the 30 f1.4 is an art series lens, but DSLR shooters are gonna see that and they're gonna be like, oh my God, this is huge value for money for DSLR lenses. But for mirrorless lenses, it's a little bit of a different game. And so putting the contemporary badge on it, being able to do more sales at a lower price point makes up for the fact that they'd get bigger margin if it were a, if it had an art badge on it. That also means that there will be some greater issues with stuff like chromatic aberration, but it's wide open only, but it shouldn't be really that big of a deal. Now, I think that they're, they are sequestering those as contemporary, not only because of the 18 to 35 and 50 to 100, just because of their existing, but I think that Sigma also wants to make a statement about what what kind of fits into each of those contemporary and art series brands. These lenses out of Sigma for APS-C E-mount and Micro Four Thirds for mirrorless cameras, these are lenses that they don't really, that don't really exist for the mounts that they're putting them on, on the first hand. And on the second hand, they're the, the optically best, especially for the price point for those systems. Now, they're primes, and Sigma introduced art primes for DSLRs originally, so I feel like contemporary and mirrorless is something that's kind of coming together here as opposed to art. Now, I know that the art series primes that Sigma's made are fantastic, but they are a little slow at f2.8, and they don't, they fit the design philosophy of mirrorless bodies, but they're not really up to the snuff that the contemporary ones are. So I think that the arts, when they come in, will be the zooms, will be other statement pieces, but I think in, in conjunction, in combination, we have to look at what Sigma's bigger brand ideas are. On mirrorless, what would have been an art prime is now a contemporary. What is an art zoom probably will stay an art zoom. But anyway, I'm super stoked about that 16 and the 50, 55, whatever it is when it comes out. So stoked. Hey guys, quick aside. I would love it if y'all would check out my Amazon affiliate links below. I get a small kickback fee if y'all decide to purchase anything through those. Now, that doesn't change the price of anything, but I would really appreciate if y'all would consider 
what if you're buying anything through Amazon for Christmas to go ahead and use those because that would mean the absolute world to me. I so appreciate your time and your consideration on that subject. At any rate, Sony a7 III, 24 megapixels, six frames per second with a mechanical shutter. I'm sure we can expect higher frame rate with electronic shutter, 4K 30, 693 autofocus points, AF joystick, that AF joystick, by the way, probably number one feature in my book. It's the AF joystick mostly by itself if I'm being completely honest, that has really drawn me towards Fuji. Now the color science that Fuji has is superb and I love it and I want it all over my photos, right? But the AF joystick, I have a 60 and this is a great camera, but I hate having to do the focus recompose off the center autofocus point because it sucks. And the center autofocus point isn't as good as it really should be. And I never have that issue with phase detect autofocus on mirrorless cameras, right? So an AF joystick would mean that I could use the full spread. You, anybody could use the full spread to its full potential with considerable ease. The problem with Sony's Alpha 6000 series bodies, the big problem in my view is the lack of that AF joystick because it makes manipulating it on that D-pad so onerous and it's so frustrating because you know you, you click and it actually changes your shutter speed or your aperture, whatever you have it set to. So I think that that AF joystick, huge deal, that will really, really be a statement because the 6D Mark II doesn't have that. A7 III probably gonna be priced competitively with the 6D Mark II offering so much more. The A7 III is gonna be a huge statement, right? Value for money. And that's what Sony's been doing this whole time. The A7 II still holds up really well against the 6D Mark II, with the exception of the tilty flippy touchscreen, right? So I don't know if we can expect to see that on the A7 III, the tilty flippy touchscreen that is, but what we will be able to see is fantastic autofocus performance, world-class autofocus performance. We're gonna see crazy good video. We're gonna see crazy good dynamic range. We're gonna see, I like, this is gonna be fantastic camera. So I am super stoked for that because it looks so much like the camera of my dreams. At any rate, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for letting me be super stoked through all this.